right now on five on your side at 10. Another chill in the air tonight. Why these wild temperature swings continue into the weekend. Rallying for the coach. Our prayers are working. We're going to continue to pray and stay positive. Tonight, the champions champion for their coach sidelined by a medical emergency during the state tournament. Our top story, a two-year-old boy shot after getting hold of a gun. Children don't understand, you know, what the guns are capable of. The charges police are now seeking against a St. Louis Sheriff's deputy. Tonight, that toddler is recovering after the accidental shooting this weekend in Ferguson. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Investigators say the deputy is claiming responsibility and is now facing a criminal charge. Brent Solomon is live outside the sheriff's office with what the sheriff is saying tonight. Brent. Well, Mike, the sheriff says that deputies here go through training so that situations like this don't happen. More from him in a minute, but first, I caught up with the officer who responded to the scene as soon as the call came in that a two-year-old boy shot himself in the stomach. It was just before 6 Saturday evening here at the Knowles Townhomes off Pershall Road in 270. You committed this act and you have to be accountable for it. Ferguson Police Detective Sammy Newman was there when the call came in. He responded, arriving at the St. Louis Sheriff's deputy's home. A two-year-old relative was visiting the deputy when the little boy picked up the man's service gun and shot himself. Children don't understand, you know, what the guns are capable of, right? And when they have it within reach, they they often curious. You know, they want to they go on to play with it. They want to go touch it and load your guns up. Uh, invest in some like gun locks. That's probably especially important if a child is visiting your home. 100%. We reached out to Sheriff Vernon Betts, a spokesperson sending us a statement saying, quote, first, our prayers are with the family of this young man who was tragically injured. We are praying for his complete recovery. This tragic accident is exactly why I mandate weapon safety training and safe storage, including gun locks. Police are seeking a misdemeanor charge of endangering the welfare of a child against that deputy. Newman says just because he's in law enforcement doesn't mean he's above the law. I will hold you to a higher standards because you've been through the training. You know that danger that associated with guns. If you are law enforcement or you're a regular civilian, right? There's for every action there is a reaction and consequences, right? An update now. I'm told that little boy was released from the hospital and is recovering nicely. Meantime, I asked the sheriff here if that deputy will be suspended as a result of this. We're waiting to get that answer. Live in St. Louis tonight, Brent Solomon, five on your side. Developing tonight, a teenager is dead and the Major K squad is now investigating. Police say the 15 year old boy was shot this afternoon near Purdue and Bradford Avenues in Pagedale. That's in North St. Louis County. Five on your side's Robert Townsend is live tonight outside the Pagedale Police Department with the latest on this. Kelly spent nine hours and police have not told us any new information about the case. Meantime, neighbors and St. Louis County's prosecutor have a lot to say about this latest shooting that claimed a teen's life. In mid-afternoon, it was an upsetting sight to see for parents in this Pagedale neighborhood. Just feet away from a park and a playground, a 15-year-old boy found shot to death in an alley. It's quite breaking that you have to come home to some stuff like this, that your neighborhood is blocked off from someone getting killed. Neighbors say shortly after one Wednesday, they heard gunfire. Police went to the 1600 block of Purdue Avenue and saw the teenager had been shot in his chest. My son said he heard about seven, about seven shots. Investigators put down more than a half dozen yellow evidence markers and also found the young victim's shoe in the street. But it's just sad. It's just, it's happening too often. You can't even send my kid. kids want to come out and play, but you can't even send them outside to play because of all the violence going on here. We have to do something about uh, this, this type of violence. St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell went to the scene to learn what he could about the shooting. What we're seeing is that uh, this type of violence is happening with younger and younger victims and assailants for that matter. Um, and obviously there's a lot of 
issues that need to be addressed. Many family members of the young victim also showed up looking for answers. About six hours after the deadly shooting, detectives returned to the neighborhood. When is this going to end? 19 investigators are right now working on this case. If you know anything about it, call Crime Stoppers or the Paysdale Police Department. We're live in Paysdale. I'm Robert Townsend, five on your side. A 15 year old is now charged in the stabbing death of a Jennings Junior High School student during an after school fight. He was arrested last night in Jefferson City for second degree murder in the death of 14 year old Justin Brooks. The arrest came as Brooks's family and the community gathered for a vigil. We talked with a criminal justice attorney who explained what goes into a judge's decision of whether the case will stay in a juvenile court or move to adult court. Maybe a uh, battering of someone may not get certified over, but a murder of someone probably will get certified. Okay, I'm not a prognosticator of what the judge is going to do, uh, but they look at the nature of a crime and look at what other aspects to it. Uh, if that judge is kind of standard, that child would get certified as an adult and let the adult system deal with it. If convicted as a juvenile, the suspect could be facing juvenile detention until he's 18 years old. In some cases, the court can extend that to the age of 21. Turning now to our weather first forecast, a cold night across St. Louis on this first official day of spring. It Full does, official, <laughs> official day. It does not feel like it. It's because temperatures could drop below freezing overnight. You probably need your heat on. Steve meteorologist Scott Connell's here with what you can expect in the morning, Scotty. Yeah, you know, temperatures will be down into the 20s for some of us tomorrow morning, especially north and east of St. Louis. But right now, we're still settling back through the 40s in a lot of places around the immediate metro area. And you're looking at temperatures in the 30s as you go into some of the outlying areas and especially going farther north and east. Right now, 39 in Alton, Greenville, and Effingham, 35 over in Litchfield at this hour. Skies remain mostly clear here. The showers have been down to our south. Bottom line here is as we work our way through the overnight hours, a few clouds will start to roll in. That should limit the amount of cooling overall. And really, the coolest of air that started filtering in last night has struggled to get farther to the southwest of St. Louis. So some folks may not get much below 35 to 40 southwest of St. Louis. We think we'll be in the upper 30s in the metro area and then going north and northeast. That's your best chance for those chilly temperatures below freezing. There's a rain chance on Friday. It's a pretty measly one and that rain is likely early next week. We'll track that out for you coming up in a few minutes, Kelly. All right, see you then, Scott. Tonight, police in the Metro East are searching for the people responsible for a home invasion and shooting. Happened early this morning on Kathy Drive and Pontoon Beach. A 27 year old man shot several times. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Anyone with information should call police. In St. Louis, police have identified the woman killed in a hit and run crash in Soulard. 43 year old Cynthia Curtis was hit by a car in the intersection of Russell and Gravois around 1.30 Sunday morning. Police are still looking for the driver. If you know anything about the crash, call Crime Stoppers. You will remain anonymous. The number is 866-371-TIPS. A barn along with $50,000 worth of tractors was destroyed after an early morning fire in the Metro East. This happened on Hedge Road in Roxana. The owner says a greenhouse full of tomato plants near the barn also destroyed. Mm. Firefighters had a hard time getting into the battle to fight the flames. There was uh, kind of limited access, so we had to kind of create our own uh, access points through uh, what were already windows and then just enlarging those and then uh, sawing through the sheet metal to get to the fire, the body of the fire. One firefighter pulled a muscle while fighting the fire, but there were no other injuries. The cause is under investigation. Tonight, the Incarnate Word Academy community came together to pray for their beloved basketball coach. Dan Rolfus has been in critical condition since suffering a medical emergency Friday night in Columbia after his team advanced to the state championship game. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski was there for tonight's prayer service. Laura. Mike and Kelly, it was an emotional night for the entire Incarnate Word community, but the good news is Coach Dan Rolfus is making small improvements, but is still fighting for his life, even as his supporters prayed tonight. 
Head coach Dan Rolfus has been leading Incarnate Word Academy's girls basketball team to state championships for 24 years. Knowing him as a coach and how he coached me, I, I always thought he was like this crazy psycho man that was just yelling all the time. And uh, he's trying to do way more than that. He's more than a coach. He's, you know, a mentor. The Red Knights are undefeated and have been since 2020, winning 131 games in a row. Our goal is not to go undefeated. Our goal every year is just to win state. The last one of those games was the the hardest for them. Their head coach collapsed after they won their state final four game just hours before they'd have to come back to the court and play in the state championship. I was just really trying to keep the girls together and keep everything under control, just not trying to freak anybody out, you know, try to handle it as best we could. Even though Coach Rolfus wasn't on the sideline that night, they played hard through their emotions to bring home the state championship win for themselves, but especially for him. We all wrote as a team play for Rolfus on our wrists, so we always had that reminder to look down. He, I know he was there with us that game. He truly got us to that point. His son and daughter provided an update to everyone at the prayer service saying his heart has made improvements, but he's still on a ventilator and round-the-clock dialysis at University Hospital in Columbia. When he does wake up, he's able to respond by nodding his head or shaking no wiggling his toes or squeezing our hands. He always fights for his players, and now they say it's their turn to fight for him through prayers. Our prayers are working. We're going to continue to pray and stay positive, and he's a fighter, so we know that he's going to fight his way out of this just like he would anything else. He's too competitive not to. The coach's family says they hope they'll be able to get him off the ventilator soon so that he can continue to recover more comfortably. It's a night to remember with a price tag that's hard to forget. Tonight, where area high school students can get dressed in the nines without spending a dime for prom. The cavalry has arrived after a bombardment of hail. With the size of the hail and the severity of the damage, we are seeing a lot of total losses. The rush tonight to file insurance claims in the St. Louis region. No repeat of last Thursday's giant hail anytime soon, but there may be some thunder by early next week. The change is happening as we head toward the weekend. It's now been 12 days since University of Missouri student, a University of Missouri student disappeared in Nashville, Tennessee. The search for Riley Strain is expanding to nearby counties. Today, crews searched a dam along the Cumberland River, which is about 42 miles downstream from where the 22-year-old was last seen on the night of March 8th. Investigators say they found no new evidence. Strain was in Nashville for a fraternity trip and disappeared after being kicked out of a bar. Interest rates are staying put for now. Today, the Federal Reserve left them unchanged at more than 5%, blaming persistent inflation. The central bank suggested three rate cuts could still be coming sometime this year. Amazon's first ever big spring sale is now underway. The six day sale is similar to the popular Prime Day events. It features deals on spring fashion, fitness and household items. And you don't have to be a Prime member to reap the benefits. The sale runs through Monday. A live look at St. Louis Lambert International Airport tonight. A new airline is moving in today. Avello Airlines announced it will add nonstop flights to New Haven, Connecticut starting in June. The Houston-based airline is offering introductory one-way fares of $79. Well, prom season is almost here, and it's becoming an expensive rite of passage for teens and their families. The average cost is about $1,100 when all is said and done. In tonight's Making Ends Meet, Michelle Lee shows you how you really don't have to spend a dime in some cases. If your family is getting ready for prom, you know that it is so expensive, but we are going to help you make ends meet. We have Tracy Elsley with Caring Mothers. Yes. Thanks for being here. Yes, yes. Thank you for okay. having me. What are we doing here? Look at all of these dresses. Yes, we're here to offer free prom dresses for any teen that's in need, I don't care what your status is, any teen that's in, in need for these dresses for prom. We want each girl to come in here and pick out whatever they want. They can pick out a prom dress, they can pick out a graduation dress. We just want them to walk out of here and feel like somebody else cares. Prom mm -hmm. has really become unattainable for some folks. Yes, yes, it's, it very is. It, I have two, I had two daughters mm -hmm. and I put them through high school and prom was very expensive back then. So that gave me the push to do this.
times are so different now and the dresses are very expensive and each dress here is it means a lot and you also have suits I saw we have suits yes we have suits for young men if they come in here and find anything I just got those probably within the past year or so and you can see how it really impacts a family and it yes. impacts a young person yes absolutely it helps boost their self-esteem and you know when they look in the mirror they their faces just they glow and that's what I want yeah. and that's the meaningful part for all of this. Well, thank you. And thank you for all that you do for our community. It's Absolutely. so amazing. Absolutely. We're 15 years, 16 years going, and, you know, it just warms my heart just to do this every year. For Making Ends Meet, Michelle Lee, Five on Your Side. And appointments to see the dresses or suits at Harmony Church St. Louis can be made for every Wednesday in April. Tomorrow marks one week since a destructive hailstorm hit the St. Louis region. Insurance companies have sent in their catas uh, catastrophe response teams. They have set up drive up sites in O'Fallon, Missouri for adjusters to assess the damage to cars. One company says it's already recorded 8,500 claims. With the size of the hail and the severity of the damage, we are seeing a lot of total losses. And with that, we're, if the vehicle's repairable, we're issuing the checks on site for the customers. And if they're um, a total loss, then we're settling it with them on site here, too. The team's plan to be here for a couple of weeks. The drive through service is by appointment only. It is suggested you contact your agent first. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell for the weather first forecast on this first full night. Of spring. It doesn't feel like it's got. Yeah, you know, it's cooling off a little bit, but today we, we topped out at 60 degrees in St. Louis. A little bit, yeah, a little above average, and it's a quiet night over at Lambert tonight. And flights, well, there seem to be a few delays, but they'll get in here before the night's done. 42 at Edwardsville, 44 in Cahokia, Wildwood's 43 degrees right now, St. Charles at 41. Coolest temperatures are going to be to the north and northeast of St. Louis. On our Illinois side, that's where the cooler air has filtered in. You'll notice our dew point, this is how dry the air is. You may have a little static electricity shuffling along the carpet tonight and then touching a light switch. Air is very dry, still 31% your relative humidity, 45 degrees. The wind very light out of the north northeast at six miles per hour. So 60 was the high, 40 was the low. Those just a hair above average for this time of year. But the coolest air behind that front that came through yesterday has settled into the areas here north and northeast of St. Louis. This is where we expect temperatures to drop back into the upper 20s. As you go farther to the southwest of St. Louis, we're like mid 30s for lows. And in town proper, we probably Hopefully don't see those temperatures drop below freezing. Here's the satellite and radar across the middle part of the country. We did have some scattered showers popping up earlier today. Well to our south, that was along that front, which is now stalling out in northern portions of Arkansas. And again, the brunt of the cool air really lagging behind that front. So we're not all that cold. And with the front stalling out to our south, that means this unsettled weather coming out of New Mexico, Arizona into Texas generally stays to our south. So a pretty decent Thursday's on the way. We expect temperatures to be a little cooler tomorrow, only in the mid to lower 50s for highs, we think. And as you go through the day, some patches of clouds here and there. We're jumping into Friday. We have another weather system coming in from the north and west Friday afternoon. This will be a cold front going to sneak in here pretty quickly with a chance for a few showers and maybe even a brief rumble of thunder along it. There's not going to be a lot of rain with this. So if you get some rain on Friday, that's great. It doesn't amount to much. We need some rain and we're going to have to wait. It looks like until Monday before substantial rain arrives. How are we doing this weekend? Well, it's a dry weekend. Clouds will be on the increase for Sunday. Temperatures cooler Saturday, but a brighter day back into the 60s for highs on Sunday. Monday morning, our rain chance is really ramping up. Another pretty good sized storm system moves our way. Potential for some heavier rain, southeast Missouri, southern portions of Illinois, maybe even a couple of strong thunderstorms, especially to our south as we head into Monday afternoon. That is going to be the area we watch for severe weather, but we are hopeful still that we will get upwards of an inch of rain in some spots, maybe a little bit more out of this, but I think we kind of keep it at a half an inch to an inch until we see just how much moisture this storm system has with it. That's our best shot at rain that's widespread over the next 10 days. And temperatures, they're up, they're down, each yeah, little front rocks and down, so Friday's gonna be a little bit warmer than the weekend. All right. Scott, thanks. Frank is here with sports. The baseball season opened up. The Cardinals have a torrid hitting outfielder right now. 
A SLU basketball coaching candidate was on the sidelines tonight, and City SC's magnificent goal was rewarded. This Five on Your Side sports report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. It's hard to believe a week from tomorrow we're playing baseball for real. The Cardinals and Dodgers in L.A. After tonight, seven exhibition games left, so the Cardinals are going to have to make some big roster decisions soon. And Dylan Carlson is making a statement now. Facing the Nationals, interesting, two guys who don't get a whole lot of love in town are thriving. Carlson, grand slam. He had two more hits today. He's been on fire lately. And how about Matt Carpenter? He was two for two tonight in spring training. Carp is now hitting 409 with a 481 on base percentage. Cardinals win it 13 to four. The biggest remaining question is, does Victor Scott start the season with the Cardinals? When you have a player like Victor Scott II and what he's shown so far, I think it's you, you really have to take a long, hard look, take a deep breath. Don't worry about starting his clock. That's not important at this point. The most important thing is having the best players on the field, and I think he's one of them. While spring training continues, Shohei Otani and the Dodgers opened up the regular season against the Padres this morning in Korea. Shohei had two hits and drove in a run in a three-run Dodger eighth inning as L.A. wins it 5-2. to two. Big matchup on the high school baseball diamond today. Parkway South's Brady Kellenbrink, he's committed to LSU against Slew's Andrew Dumont. He's committed to Tennessee. Unsurprisingly, this was a pitching duel. Look at some of these strikeouts from the pair. They had the velocity and the breaking stuff working today. Remember those names. Parkway South won this one 2-1. to one. No one knows for sure if Josh Schertz will be the next head coach at SLU. We do know he won't accept any job officially until his Indiana State season is over. Although sources tell me there could be a verbal agreement before it's official. Indiana State hosted SMU in the first round of the NIT. A packed house for an NIT game in Terre Haute? They just don't want to lose this man, Josh Schertz, the NBC Coach of the Year. The Sycamores trailed most of the game. They got their first lead on Robbie Avila down low. They call him Cream Abdul-Jabbar. These are some of the most efficient offensive plays in basketball. Look at that pretty pass by Avila. Indiana State advances to host Minnesota this weekend after a 101-92 victory, win number 400 for Shirts. The Fighting Illini are raring to go. The Big Ten Tournament champions face Moorhead State in the first round of the NCAA Tournament tomorrow afternoon. But in the back of their minds is last year's crash and burn against Arkansas in the round of 64. The feeling here is this is a much different team. Uh, it's definitely a game I felt like was winnable for us, but we just didn't compete hard. Um, felt like some of the guys gave up, but um, um, I feel like the difference between this team and, and last year's team is um, no one's ready to go home. You know, we're ready to keep playing. This Five on Your Side St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. The bad news is that City SC has only been able to register one win so far this MLS season. But the good news is that the other games have been draws instead of losses. So they're still actually unbeaten. They'll look to continue that trend Saturday against D.C. Everyone is still buzzing about Joakim Nilsson's bicycle goal this is just insane. Look at this, Kelly. Today, the MLS de team determined it's the goal of the league for the past week. As a center back, a bicycle kick goal was new for Nilsson, but he did enjoy quieting the road crowd. Ah, uh, no. I may be one when I was 10, 11 years old or something like that, but no. As a center back, that doesn't happen that often. Like you said, a, a quiet stadium is also something that, that you kind of like. Uh, when you play away, uh, so um, but I, I would love to to score, maybe maybe something similar at City Park also. They call it a bicycle kick. Yes, because you're actually kind of riding a bicycle yeah, upside oh. down. It's yeah. the most amazing thing I've ever that seen. That is amazing. It's so, crazy. In your opinion: Does Victor Scott make this team? Well, it depends on who's making the roster. If it is the manager Ali Marmol, he has Victor Scott. But it's the general manager John Mozeliak. 
he does not want to start that clock right away. So it'll be an interesting little battle back and forth. But look, he's one of their best players. He should be out there opening day. And he can do things that nobody else yeah. on the team can do because he's so fast. And you can play Dylan Carlson in left field. You're fine. All right. Mm. Frank, thanks. Soon you can be a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. It will only be a four-hour drive away. A new theme park is coming to the Kansas City area. Toy maker Mattel announced plans today to open its second Mattel Adventure Park at Bonner Springs, Kansas. It will include Hot Wheels, roller coasters, Thomas the Train Rides, and a larger-than-life Barbie beach house and other Barbie-themed attractions. Construction starts later this year. The park's set to open in 2026. The Cardinals home opener just two weeks from tomorrow and taking your family to Bush Stadium will not be cheap. According to the website Money Geek, the average cost of four tickets, parking, and concessions for Cardinals games, this is the average, $147. That's $7 more than the league average. Hopefully, unlike last year, this year, it'll be worth it. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. And there you have it, five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Be sure to start your morning with today in St. Louis at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.